Hello, this is RimWorld. This is the sea ice biome. There's nothing out here. This is our only colonist, Orange. This is his only source of electrical power, but somehow we've managed to have enough light to study for the last three weeks. Actually, more than three weeks. It's been about a year since this challenge started in in-game time. Welcome back to RimWorld. Our sole colonist, Orange, is a misunderstood friend living off the human raids in the Arctic. Although this is notoriously one of the most difficult and trying RimWorld starts because there is literally nothing anywhere, we have survived, perhaps unethically, and not only survived, but prospered, advancing our knowledge from the Neolithic age to modern light technology. Our supply chain consensually relocates temporary residents into a soothing, anesthetizing bath of ice water and persuades them to rel relinquish bodily fluids to orange, and we encourage them to be more open to growth. Uh, we have had a problem over the last few weeks, and that's the, the outdoor temperatures are now above freezing. On account of the thaw, our food keeps coming in and out of frozen state, which is causing it to spoil. And so to counteract this, I'm going to send orange off on a caravan mission. Tomorrow morning, we set out for life. Fortunately, we do have a lot of expensive items with us to trade, uh, because we have only one last chance to do this, actually. We're, we're almost at the end of the food. Unfortunately, we need to travel light, but we did get this Psy Trainer for Pain Block, which is worth quite a lot of money. We need the food more than the warmth. The travel will take 1.8 days, but we have only 1.3 days worth of food, and so we have to get a move on now. Really, not something I love to do is just leave our base here, but we don't have many options now. I want to guarantee myself food. We need to figure in that Orange will probably be starving by the time that he reaches his destination because he'll go slower as he runs out of food. But he still has enough for one or two more meals. There's one, and he'll rest at nightfall, and he's run out of food. Still not enough to feed himself completely, but he should arrive at the destination right around the time when he starts to feel malnourished. And there we go, almost perfect timing. His food bar is running out just as he's arriving. And wow, he never actually felt hunger. It's time to trade. We're going to spend all of the money on rice. I accept. Rice is a fantastic food source, other than pemmican, because it has such a long shelf life. And although I'd prefer the pemmican the rice will do. And some dromedaries have joined. Well, I have no idea what they're doing up at the North Pole, but I don't think that they'll survive up here very long. Orange arrives home just in time. He drops off the supplies and goes to bed. Now, the one thing we still lack is firewood. We haven't been able to carry it because that's a heavier load on Orange, and we want him to travel as quickly as possible between home and the trading site. To combat this, we'll build an electric stove, but we still lack the required steel. However, this front room is a refrigerator refrigeration room, and we really want it to be as close to outdoor temperature as possible for most of the year. So to get that last five or so steel, we'll need to deconstruct these front two corner walls. Using that, we should have enough to make the electric stove. As for the dromedary, it's doubtful that they'll survive, but we'll keep them around as preservation for as long as possible. Even before he eats, we'll have Orange just deconstruct these walls. And that's six steel, just barely enough. Next, we'll have him work on the electric stove and then make his own meals. There we go. Success on the construction. And he's construction six now, going on seven. He should fail fewer constructions as he goes. I'm going to have him slaughter a dromedary, butcher it really quickly, and then attempt to cook a meal for breakfast. He's kind of on edge right now, so there we are. Just eat the food before you snap. And there we go. His spirits are now rising. Fortunately, we had full wind for that entire thing, so no issues with power, but we will need a battery next to store all that in. As for cooking, we'll have him use the dromedary meat first because it'll spoil before the rice, so he can cook the last of these meals. Though since the summer is ending, I think we'll have a better time with temperature now and plenty of food on hand. I never said I was a veterinarian, nor did I purport to be a miner, but I have to do what I have to do. There are still many skills in which Orange is a mere beginner, and will need the silver to trade. Although he learns more slowly, Orange can mine three or four nodes worth of silver in a day. So that's between 90 and 120 steel per day. Not a bad haul. We'll have him take it all back. And we have a royal tribute collector from the Imperium of Z. We don't really have anything as tribute, so we'll probably just be letting them pass by today. Orange will spend the next few weeks researching, cooking, and sleeping with little else dotting his days. A trading partner. Again, they leave due to the dangerous temperatures. Each day brings little more than the slow hum of the windmill, generating the little power we need to do our research. A new quest, the Tired Vagabond. We have a desperate refugee. You know what we do with those. It's time to stay at Delai. Let's see about T. She's, she's not willing to learn. Oh, I, I have a 
confession to make. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. And lung removal surgery is tricky. But an old proverb says, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. This should also grind up the medical stat on uh, Orange. And that was successful. She has decided not to stay. She was violated by surgery. I'm just going to patch up these wounds without the medicine. That was extremely worthwhile. Now he'll sleep, but no, don't do that on Dugu. Unfortunately, displaced refugees won't like our faction anymore. We, uh, we have only one real option here. I think this will be completely fine, just to... I never said this was an ethical colony. And hey, we got a lung out of it. Uh, I- I will- I will lament the relationship between Orange and Tea of recreation and fighting demons. You always gotta be suspicious of the guy who talks to you about fighting demons. I still have many demons to fight, walls to fix, and generally speaking, a lot of research to do. We finished air conditioning, it's now time to research microelectronics. I have another idea at obtaining resources, something much closer by. Now, over the years, various people have fallen out of the sky, leading to several steel slag chunks on the ground. And before any of that, we have a raider. We're really not very strong, so Cassandra sends us usually just one guy with a club. Also, not very good. Now, I don't think this guy will ever get near the house. He's got serious hypothermia, and he's only at 35% of his normal moving speed. How However, I do need shooting experience, so we'll go out to greet him. I don't know what we ever did to anger their faction, or why they keep coming back, but... Uh, here we go, he's already... He's already bleeding out, and we haven't even made any contact with him yet. If it, oh, that's unfortunate. Well, unfortunately, his clothes won't be worth very much now. I don't think he was long for this world to begin with. There we are. Time to relax. And what better way to relax than with some stomach-turning decision-making? There's another transport pod crash. This colonist is decent, but my mind is turning towards something more valuable. If we're going to progress, we're going to need a lot more steel. Another transport pod has crashed. This time an enemy, actually. A fast learning asexual man. Probably fine to just let him bleed out. This man has on a devil strand parka. That'll do nicely. We'll just bring him back in, drop him on the floor, take off his, uh, you know. Then you know the rest. It's just one way it goes. It's too easy. It's too easy. It's the obvious answer. But as we haul in the last of the steel slag chunks, you can begin to see the potential that a smelter would bring us. With this devil strand parka, we can travel light and it's time to make another trip. We have another quest to be joined by a guy named Jerk. Since we keep looking for another cannibal, it was worth it. There is Jerk. He is, uh, oh no. All right, well, we know what's happening to him next, but at least he has good items. As for the tribes people, we're being sent, we're being sent a raid of two tribes people, but again, Cassandra's threat scales very gradually. Jerk is also getting drafted and will just be a meat shield for all intents and purposes. Great aim, Orange, great, amazing. One shot in, though well, these people aren't particularly good at all. This guy's already been shot, we just wanna- we'll take him down completely and then we'll work on Brebo. There we go, just hurt jerk, great. And they're already- they're already fleeing, nice. Alright, well it's more shooting practice for Orange. And it's more goods. Well again, we'll just use him for the labor. There we are, good job now, good job jerk. That's good, we have plenty of more meals. Now just drop everything. It was real nice knowing you. Time for a consensual ice bath. And it looks again like he probably won't be able to make it back in time to do any real damage. We actually have too much stuff now. Soon it'll be time for a trip to a trader. Offload some of this. But I need steel if I want to do much else next. Another tr yet another transport pod crash. Person is still completely useless. Also hostile, so just- Has a lot of good passions, but just won't fit in very well here. Especially this trait. Cassandra provides. Cassandra cares. More forced weather and another possible colonist. We still can't use him, but we're getting closer to the time at which we can accept diverse colonists. For now, you know the drill. He probably won't have any chance to retaliate from this like the others. So far, this is extremely reliable. Uh, unfortunately, it'll be eight days of lightning. Extremely spooky, but savory. And we have most of the research we need. We desperately need steel. So it's time to go trade again. And Orange is starving, but he should be able to get back into July on time. The weather is cleared up. Maybe you think this is unconventional, but I'm going to dismantle my steel walls. It just seems so difficult to get your hands on any steel in this world. And I have an idea that I think is going to get us even more steel. Since things keep raining down from the sky, I figure why not depend on that happening a little bit more often? All of that's enough for only 100 steel. We're going to need to deconstruct the stone cutting table. There just isn't enough stone around here as it stands. That gets us just barely enough for a smith. 
smelter. And there's the smelter working now. We can smelt weapons, we can smelt anything. So we'll use this to make more steel from now on. And it may not be a lot, but one haul is 15. Oh, we won't really need a front room anymore. The food thread is over. I figure we can use this for solar panels and a battery. More cargo pods. And that's more steel for us out of the sky. Not to mention a lot of smoke leaf as well. And we'll have orange build the battery right here. Cross your fingers and it worked. Now it's by no means amazing, but now we have a way of creating resources. And there you have it. Another raid by those worm people. There's two of them now. Must be because of the impassable terrain. This guy is uh, not good at anything. He's also slothful, so he'll get what he deserves. And that's a headshot. Surprised he survived, but oh well. The other one is named Named Ola. Also not very good at anything, but a brawler, so we won't get let her get close. Could be dangerous. Fortunately, there's no cover for these people out here. Three and four. That one was a hit. Where did that hit her? Uh, merely in the right arm. Not going to be enough. And the wooden hand. The wooden hand wasn't much use to begin with either. That was one to the torso. This is getting a little closer than I'd prefer it. I'm gonna see if we can outrun her. This was a little bit dangerous. Her moving is down to 71 from being shot in the torso though. A close call, but we'll get more steel from them and food, so it's mostly fine. There's another. Come on, don't whiff. Don't whiff now, Orange. There we are. What was that? Ah, that one was to the left lung. A wonderful hit. Love it when he gets those lungs. Unfortunately, we can't remove them anymore, but there's always the kidneys, so many different opportunities at excavation here. And some jade as well. We're gonna take all of that, and we're gonna have it. Have it all. I love RimWorld, and I want to share it with you. Maybe my favorite part about this game is the fact that you can make almost anything into raw resources. Even the items that our attackers held can now be the foundations of a room. It's amazing. You can repurpose anything. All of the crappy steel items just get repurposed purposed for resources. So even in the middle of nowhere, we get to have something. And now another traitor from Ithwalia. Really our only major ally. What do they bring as an offering? Well, they don't have much, but they're willing to buy our smoke leaf joints. And we're going to need to buy that arctic wolf for food. We'll take the dog. And there it is. It's more meals and it's what we need. If we want to survive in the long term, now we may have resources, but we still need hydroponics. A solar flare puts us out for a couple of days. And a new quest. You know what that means? Not very good. She hasn't even met Orange and she doesn't like him yet. Now I think you know how this one ends. He's made intellectual level 17. Now considered a region leading master. I never mentioned this, but I have had so many scaria infested cats come along. Some visitors from Ithwalia. Ah, they have trading items. What luck. We're just about at the end of hydroponics too. And then we can get on to microelectronics again. Now my next project will be very unconventional, but it's necessary. Now we're running low on options, so I need to grow the crops right in the room in which I live. We'll put a sun lamp here. That lights up the room even more, but it uses up tons of power. We'll place a hydroponics basin just underneath it. Already we're draining power. And we also won't have the right temperature for growth. To make matters worse, we've botched the construction, so this is going to make it even more... This will be even more difficult for now. We'll need to install a heater in the room as well. For now, we complete the heater and we uninstall the sun lamp as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take the liberty of, of uh, clearing away all these scary infested cats. They really do seem to have an affinity for my base. The cats are a brutal warning to potential invaders and another level of intellect. And the rifle gang attacks. This one's terrible. Takes one. Two. I hadn't noticed this up until now, but human targets are actually much easier to hit because they're not the size of rabbits. So there is some luck in getting a human raider. After that, some cloud watching, cooking, collecting, stealing, and staring at pieces of paper for many more long hours. What's kept me alive for a long time is the fact that your character isn't very good at rationing food. You need to manually manage the meal eating if you want to keep them alive as long as possible. Your character is optimized to not snap mentally, but if you go in to micromanage, you can make it last a long time. That and the fact that Cassandra always aims at three to five colonists or so for your colony. So I keep getting sent people to join. Now who is this Collins? Again, no. The answer is no. More capybaras are passing through the area. This actually seems like an excellent opportunity. And then we'll punch a few of them. And it seems they're going over the land bridge here. And they are disappearing. We'll attack this capybara and handsomely make our way off with one. That's a free meal. Collins is stressed, but Orange has now two meals. Now the raids are becoming more frequent. 
Still small, but frequent. Still no cannibals. This will never do. Another opportunity for Orange to demonstrate his prowess. There's one. That was not enough, but it was... Ah, uh, okay. I love these masterwork items. Th Thrombofer has fallen out of the sky. And two more steel slag chunks, just as valuable. And with that, it's finally enough to make a hydroponics basin. But only just barely, and we still have all of our crap on the floor. At long last, we have it. We have plants, so we still need the power with which we can support them. I'll need to unplug some of these other devices. And the first crops in so long. Of course, it's only just barely warm enough in here to grow. But until we have better power, the lights are just going to be flickering in here. To have come so far, and yet still lack the steel we need. Regardless, if Orange is kept on now for two years, it may not seem like that, but it's been two years actually. I'm sure he'll make it a lot longer if he's made it this far. I think we'll leave it there. Sad that he hasn't found a companion. One truly is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. But my grandmother used to say, if you have a book, you have a friend. And that means that Orange has one friend. Well, I think that's all for now. I've never been this wealthy, but this derelict at the same time, but somebody else just fell out of the sky, and it's also someone who is extremely social. I think you know what happens next. Well, that'll be all for now. I think you know how this ends. As always, thanks very much to my patrons. You are the crashing transport pod in the North Pole of my own mind, and for you, I am very grateful. Hope you enjoyed the video. Kind of a tutorial in a way. At least it's helped me work through the guide. I'm liking the ice sheet. The more limited the resources, I think the more engaging the playthrough through. I still haven't felt far from the sense of beginner gains as I began with, and so to me, this has been a success. But you be the judge of that. Until next time, my name's Ambiguous Amphibian. Goodbye.